It truly feels like the manufacturer's sender has finally answered our wishes with its latest balcony power plant, a modular all-in-one design, capacities of up to 8 kilowatt hours, an output of up to an impressive 1200 watts, and Shelly compatibility are just a few of the features that make Zenger's new Hyper 2000 balcony power station stand out. What else it promises, how the device performs in practice, and whether investing in this storage unit is worthwhile for you, or if you should opt for a different one, our questions we'll explore together in today's video. For this reason, let's not waste any time, we'll jump straight in after the intro. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos in the future. You can find the current prices for this device, which also helps support my channel, linked in the video description below. Thank you for your support, and now, let's get started after the intro. As time progresses, balcony power stations naturally continue to evolve. Regular viewers of my channel may even remember the first generation, specifically the Zendure Solar Flow. If you haven't seen that video yet, feel free to check it out. I'll link it right up here in the info card. It was a solid balcony power station, but did have room for improvement. Now, one year later, I have the latest Zendure balcony power station on the table for you, the Hyper 2000. We're going to take a detailed look at everything it offers and how it performs in testing. First, let's start with a quick look at what's included and the setup process. The packaging of the Hyper 2000 as well as the accompanying AB2000 battery pack is fairly plain on the outside. There's a large Zendur logo and that's about it, nothing else to see here. Things get much more interesting once we open the box and look at the contents. Upon opening the box, alongside a rather intricate packaging design to ensure everything is well protected, we find the actual Hyper 2000, a user manual, and another small box. Inside this smaller box, you'll find the connection cable and two metal brackets. That's it. There's no additional content here. The same goes for the battery. It includes just the product itself and a compact user manual. Nevertheless, everything necessary to get the unit up and running is included. Of course, additional accessories can also be purchased, such as smart sockets or expansion batteries. However, we'll dive into this topic a bit later. For now, I'd suggest we cover a few quick words about setup and installation before taking a closer look at the storage system. Essentially, I must say that setting up the Hyper 2000 is just as easy as the previously introduced solar flow, if not even simpler. The entire system is plug and play, meaning the batteries and inverter are simply stacked on top of each other, automatically connecting in the process. Similarly, connecting the PV inputs or plugging the power cable into the outlet is incredibly straightforward. It requires no specialized knowledge, let alone an electrician. The entire process is completed in under 15 minutes. Setting up the storage system via mobile device software is equally uncomplicated. Downloading the app, Creating a user account, setting the output power, and scheduling tasks took me about 20 minutes during testing and was far from complicated. I also encountered no issues or complications throughout the process, which is something you would expect from a renowned manufacturer like this. For anyone who feels this explanation was a bit too quick or would like a separate video specifically on the assembly and setup of the Hyper 2000, please let me know in the comments below. That way I'll know and can create a dedicated video on the topic. Once it's online, I'll link it right here in the info card. So far, so good. Let's move directly to the external appearance and first impressions. In terms of external design, I can say that Singer's new Hyper 2000 stands out impressively. The device makes a fantastic first impression and is of exceptionally high quality. I found no leftover material, perfectly uniform gaps, and no sharp edges anywhere on the unit, clear signs of superior craftsmanship. Additionally, the device is made entirely of die-cast aluminum, which is not only premium in appearance but also very durable. As a result, the entire unit, including the battery, is IP65 certified, meaning it is fully protected against water splashes and rain. This level of protection is, of course, essential. 
If I want a place and use my battery outside on the balcony, it absolutely needs to be rainproof. In practice, this means we don't have to worry about electrical damage caused by moisture. The unique feature of this new balcony power station from Zendur is its modular, all-in-one design, where the individual components can simply be stacked on top of each other. This brings several advantages in practice. For example, if we think back to the old solar flow system, it always consisted of three components, the battery, a hub, and an inverter. With the new system, the hub and inverter are no longer separate components. They're both integrated into this single unit. Another advantage is the ability to seamlessly integrate older batteries, like the AB1000, into this system by simply stacking them on top. Lastly, let's address a common concern with other manufacturers. What happens if something breaks? With an all-in-one unit, you'd need to replace the entire device. However, with this modular design, you can easily swap out either the inverter or the battery if one of them fails. This saves significant costs in practice and ensures you can use the system for much longer. This advantage does come with the trade-off, a slightly higher weight, which I've also checked for you. The Hyper 2000 unit alone weighs 8.57 kilograms, as shown here, while the AB2000 battery weighs a hefty 21.8 kilograms. This brings the total weight of the unit to an impressive 30.37 kilograms, as illustrated in the comparison graphic, a significant amount. On the positive side, each battery, as well as the unit itself, features a foldable and robust metal handle, making it easier to carry over short distances. Other than that, there's not much to see on the exterior. On the front, you'll find just one button and a multicolored LED strip below it that provides various status updates. On the back, you'll find all the relevant input and output ports. We'll explore the device's functionality and performance in the next section. When discussing performance and connections, it's crucial to examine the back of the unit where all the inputs and outputs are located. On the right, labeled AC, is the output for alternating current, while on the left, marked PV input, are the ports for connecting PV modules. Let's start by taking a closer look at the inputs. Taking a closer look at the connections, you'll notice that Zenger has equipped the new Hyper 2000 with the familiar MC4 connectors. This offers a huge practical advantage you can directly connect and use virtually any solar panel with this system. Additionally, there are a total of four inputs, meaning you can easily connect up to four PV modules to the device. Compared to similar systems, the Hyper 2000 is well-equipped, capable of efficiently absorbing, storing, and outputting a significant amount of energy in a short time. It's worth noting that while the Hyper 2000 has four individual PV inputs, it's equipped with only two MPPT charge controllers identifiable by the green and white markings. For a future update, it would be ideal to include four charge controllers to ensure that each PV panel is utilized to its full potential. When it comes to the permissible input voltage of the PV modules, the Hyper 2000 offers a broad range, supporting voltages from 15 to 55 volts. This allows for seamless connection of various solar panels to the device. The only aspect to keep in mind is the series configuration of PV modules as the voltage must not exceed 55 volts. Parallel configurations, on the other hand, are not an issue as long as the maximum power input is not exceeded. In this regard, there's little to worry about. As shown in the comparison graphic, the Hyper 2000 is very well designed in terms of power handling, with a maximum input power of up to an impressive 1800 watts. This means each charge controller can handle up to 900 watts, allowing for up to 450 watts per panel. In practice, this means you can easily connect four large, 450-watt solar panels to the system. This is particularly advantageous if you have a high-capacity system, such as when using multiple batteries stacked together. These batteries can be charged quickly, allowing you to store a significant amount of energy in a short amount of time. Next to this, on the right side, is the alternating current AC output connection, which allows you to feed power directly into your home's electrical network. A suitable cable for this is included in the package. As previously mentioned, the advantage of this all-in-one system is that a separate inverter is not needed. It's already built into the unit, enabling you to feed power directly into your home network via this connection. The output power of the Hyper 2000, as shown in the comparison chart, is also highly impressive, reaching a robust 1200 watts. This output can, of course, be adjusted individually via the app. 
However, it's important to note that there are country-specific regulations to consider. For example, in Germany, the output of a balcony power plant like this is not allowed to exceed 800 watts. As for feeding alternating current into the home network, the device fortunately offers several modes, which I've extensively tested in practice. The first option is constant output, where the device consistently feeds a set power level, such as 100, 200, or up to 1200 watts into the network until the battery is depleted. The second option, which is much more recommendable, is a scheduled mode. Here, the device adjusts its output based on preset times, for instance, delivering more power in the evening than during the day. The output can be adjusted in 1 watt increments, which I personally find remarkable and something I haven't seen anywhere else. Additionally, the scheduling feature works reliably, delivering the specified power levels at the set times. This is clearly visible afterward in the statistical data provided by the app. Things get much smarter when we look at the next two modes. The Hyper 2000 supports the use of smart plugs, which can be connected directly to electrical devices to identify their energy consumption. I tested this feature extensively in practice with a high-powered electric kettle and documented the results. Upon switching on the device, the smart plug immediately detected a high consumption of about 2200 watts. This information is automatically transmitted to the Hyper 2000 within seconds, allowing it to regulate its output power. In this case, I observed via the app that the Hyper 2000 ramped up to its maximum output of 1200 watts within about 10 seconds to help cover the device's power demand. In normal scenarios, in essence with devices requiring less power, the Hyper 2000 adjusts its output to match the device's needs, ensuring the energy requirements are fully met. However, this only works if the electrical device is on the same phase as the Hyper 2000. Otherwise, the feature isn't effective in practice. To address this limitation, there's a fourth option that will please many users. The entire system is compatible with the popular Shelly system. This device is installed directly in the fuse box and continuously monitors how much power or energy is flowing from the external grid into the home network. This information is then sent to the Hyper 2000 or multiple units if used, allowing the battery to adjust its output in real time based on the data from the Shelly system. In practice, this small component and the compatibility between these two devices are incredibly practical and beneficial. The battery, as mentioned, only feeds as much power into the specific phase of the grid as is currently being consumed in the home, avoiding any excess power being fed into the public grid. Regarding this aspect, the storage system is exceptionally smart and versatile, which is highly advantageous in real-world scenarios. While we're still on the topic of output, there's another point to discuss. How does the device handle temperature development under load? I thoroughly tested this aspect in practice as well. First, it's important to note that the new Hyper 2000 is entirely passively cooled with no built-in fan or similar components. To achieve this, the top of the device is intentionally designed with large cooling fins to ensure effective heat dissipation and prevent overheating. In practice, I ran various scenarios while monitoring temperatures using a thermal imaging camera. At an ambient temperature of approximately 28 degrees, typical for summer, and with a constant output of 1200 watts at peak, the device reached maximum temperatures of around 50 degrees, which is quite notable. If temperatures rise further, the device also sends a warning notification through the app and reduces its output to prevent any potential damage. The elevated temperatures were observed only on the top of the inverter, while the battery remained cool. This ensures that concerns about battery lifespan are unnecessary. Let's now move to the second most important aspect of this balcony power system, the battery. As previously mentioned, the modular design allows the battery to function as a standalone unit, which can be replaced or expanded as needed. The practical aspect, the connector remains the same, allowing us to easily use and expand the batteries from our previous Zenger solar flow system with the new Hyper. Sitting on the table in front of us is the largest variant, the AB2000, boasting a solid 1920 watt hours of capacity. Naturally, this unit is not lightweight, tipping the scales at 21.8 kilograms. On the flip side, it offers a high energy density of around 88 watt hours per kilogram, allowing it to store a significant amount of energy relative to its weight. For those who need more capacity, as mentioned, multiple batteries can be stacked to increase capacity, 
Up to four batteries can be used, and AB1000 and AB2000 units can be mixed without issue. If maximum capacity is the goal, it's recommended to opt for four AB2000 batteries. This configuration provides an impressive total of 7,680 watt hours, which, as shown in the comparison chart, is particularly substantial. Of course, the stored energy in the battery cannot be fully transferred back into the grid due to inherent losses, especially within the inverter. To assess these losses and determine the true efficiency of the unit, I conducted a critical test using a capacity measuring device. For this test, I first charged the battery to 100% and disconnected it from all inputs to ensure no additional power flowed in. I then set a constant output of 100 watts and started the measuring device. After several hours, the battery automatically shut off upon reaching its maximum capacity of 10%. The measuring device displayed an output of 1,463 watt hours. Adding the remaining 10% yields a total of 1,625 watt hours, resulting in a maximum efficiency of 84.46%. This places the unit solidly in the mid range of efficiency, as shown. Speaking of the automatic shutoff threshold, this can also be easily adjusted in the app along with many other features. Users have a wide adjustment range from 5% to 100%, with 5% being the absolute minimum. It's advisable to set the threshold to at least 10% or even 20% to maximize the lifespan of the battery in terms of cycles. Additionally, the app provides useful statistics such as the current battery charge level, its temperature, real time power consumption, or grid output. You can also review entire days or weeks retrospectively to get a clear statistical overview of the development over time. I also really like the layout of the app. It's well organized and visually appealing. In my opinion, just like the storage unit itself, there's nothing major to criticize here. And with that, we've reached the final verdict. Overall, I have to say that compared to its predecessor, the standard solar flow system, there have been significant improvements. The new Hyper 2000 Balcony Power Station is not only significantly more powerful and offers greater compatibility, allowing components like the inverter or battery to be easily replaced or expanded, but it is also much smarter. For instance, multiple Hyper 2000 units can communicate with each other within a network, or they can integrate with smart plugs or the Shelly system. From my perspective, it's a clear recommendation for anyone looking for a robust, powerful, and particularly smart balcony power station. You can find the current pricing for this device and ways to support the channel in the video description below. Thank you so much for your support. What do you think about this device? Feel free to share your thoughts or even your experiences in the comments below. I'm looking forward to your feedback. If you enjoyed the video, please show your support with a thumbs up to help it reach more people. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Stay healthy, take care, and see you next time. Bye!